In this video, we're going to look at one of the many applications of the exponential and logarithmic functions we've been talking about. There are many different types of quantities which grow and decay naturally at a rate proportional to their size. And these types of quantities do so according to uh, this model, which we call the law of natural growth and decay. If r is greater than zero, we have a quantity that is growing. And if r is less than zero, we have a quantity that is decaying. r is known as the relative rate of growth and decay, and it's going to be constant depending on what exactly it is that's growing or decaying. Okay. Uh, a in the formula refers to the present amount or quantity, and A sub zero is the original amount or quantity, and T is time. So we're going to look at a few different problems that follow the law of natural growth and decay, and we're going to practice solving our exponential logarithmic equations in doing so. So the first problem we're going to take a look at is about a small population of jellyfish. We have 12 jellyfish, and the population grows exponentially at an annual growth rate of 3%. Uh, two questions. How large will the population, population of jellyfish be 10 years later? And the second question. How long will it take for the jellyfish population to grow to 20? So in this particular problem, the initial population of jellyfish is 12, so that will be A sub 0. The relative rate is 3%, and this population is growing, so R is going to be positive 3%. If this was not growing, then we might make R a negative value. And the first question, uh, we're looking at the population 10 years down the road, so T equals 10. So if we plug those values into the formula, we have the new population of jellyfish equal to 12 times E raised to the 3% times 10 power. We can multiply 3% times 10, and that will give me 30%, or 3 tenths. And we can approximate this on our calculator. I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha here. We're going to do 12 times e raised to the 0 0.3 power. And you can see that this gives us 16, approximately 16.19. So approximately 16 jellyfish. Okay, so 10 years down the road, our population of 12 jellyfish has grown to 16. Let's take a look at the second question. How long will it take for the jellyfish population to grow to 20? So the difference here is we don't have a particular time. We're trying to find the amount of time that is going to give us a population of 20. So I'm going to go back to my equation, and I'm going to replace A with 20, and we're going to now find the value of T. My initial population is still 12, and my growth rate is still 3%. Those two items haven't changed. So I just need to solve this equation for T. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this equation. 20 equals 12E raised to the 3% of T solve this equation, the first thing we want to do is isolate the exponential portion of the equation. And I can do that by dividing both sides of the equation by 12. So if I do that, I'll have 20 twelfths equal to e to the 3% of t power. Once I've isolated the exponential portion of the equation, I can rewrite this equation in its logarithmic form. We start with the exponent. The exponent is 3% of t, and that's going to equal the logarithm of 20 twelfths. The base is e, so when I convert it to logarithmic form, I'm going to use the logarithm of base e, which we call the natural logarithm. So this is going to be the natural logarithm of 20 twelfths. We can go ahead and simplify 20 twelfths if we want. That would be 5 thirds. So then to find the time, all I have to do is divide both sides by 3%. So the time is equal to natural log of 5 thirds divided by 3%. And we can then approximate that using our calculator. Let's go ahead and do that. 
So in order to approximate the time that this will take, I'm going to take natural log of 5 thirds divided by 3%, and it looks like I get our approximately 17 years. Here's the second problem we can take a look at. Sethonium, a newly discovered radioactive element, has a half-life of approximately 2,400 years. If the current quantity of sethonium is 8 grams, how much will be left 200 years from now? So in this example, we're told that the half-life is 2,400 years, which means if T is 2,400, the amount of sethonium is going to be exactly half of the original amount. So if our original amount was 8 grams, the new amount, 2,400 years later, is going to be 4 grams. So if we substitute these values into the law of natural decay, in this case, we have 4 equals 8 times E raised to the R times 2,400 power. All we have to do is solve this equation for R. That will give me the relative rate of decay for sethonium. And then after I solve for R, we will solve the equation again using our new value of R to find the amount of sethonium present when T is 200 years. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this equation. We have 4 equals 8 e to the r times 2,400 power. And I'm going to solve this equation for r. That will give me the relative rate of decay for sethonium. I'm going to solve this one the same way I did the last one. First, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. That would give me 4 eighths equals e to the 2400 r power. Then I can rewrite this in logarithmic form. I start with my exponent. My exponent is 2400 r, and that's going to be the logarithm of base e, or the natural logarithm of 4 eighths, which I'm going to go ahead and reduce. That's 1 half. So the rate of decay is natural log of 1 half divided by 2400. Now, we could go ahead and approximate r if we want, but in this example, we're going to use r uh, to find the amount of sethonium that's left. So we really would prefer not to approximate it. If we approximate this now, then when I solve for the amount of sethonium, I'm going to be approximating an approximation and every time we do that, we lose accuracy. So we really don't need to approximate this. We're going to use this value of r when I answer the next question. So let's go ahead and do that. The question was, how much sethonium is going to be left uh, after 200 years? So now I can rewrite this equation. The original amount of sethonium is still 8 grams. Now we know what the rate is. The rate is natural log of 1 half divided by 2400. The time is 200 years. So I'm going to plug 200 in for T. And the question is how much, what is my new amount of sethonium? So again, the original amount is 8 grams. We found the rate using the first piece of information. And the question is about 200 years down the road. So time is going to be 200. I can simplify this a little bit. A is going to be 8e to the natural log of 1 half divided by 12, because 2400 is 200 times 12. And then I will go ahead and approximate this on my calculator, which we will do right now. OK, so if we're going to approximate the amount of sethonium, I'm going to take 8 times e raised to the natural logarithm of 1 half divided by 12. And it looks like that gives me approximately 7.55 grams of sethonium. So my original amount of 8 grams, uh, 200 years later, there's still a little more than 7.5 grams left. Sethonium, uh, 
is here to stay. It decays very, very slowly. So here's a third example we can take a look at. And this example is something we can use on Thanksgiving to make sure our turkey is cooked to the proper temperature and that it retains all of its uh, deliciousness. A uh, mistake most people make on Thanksgiving, uh, they check the turkey of the temperature several times, over and over and over again. And the problem with that is every time you poke that thermometer into the turkey, you're losing some of that juice and your turkey's drying out. So we really don't want to do that. And the good thing is we can use math to determine when that turkey is going to be done without checking the temperature over and over and over again. Okay, so in this problem, I put the Thanksgiving turkey in the oven at 11 a.m. The turkey was 35 degrees. I took it right out of the freezer, and the temperature of the oven was 325. At 12.30 p.m., I checked the temperature, and it was 130. Now, the good thing is that's the only time I need to check the temperature. If the turkey is safe to eat with an internal temperature of 165, what time will the turkey be done? Again, without checking the temperature again. So to solve this problem, we're going to use Newton's law of cooling, which looks very, very similar to the law of natural growth and decay, because it is. It's just a variation of that law. And uh, Newton discovered that if we take an object and we put it in an environment with a different temperature, then obviously the temperature of the object is going to change. If the environment is warmer than the object, then the temperature of the object will warm up. If the environment is cooler than the object, then the temperature of the object will cool down, and it does so at a rate that follows the law of natural growth and decay. So when we use this rule, D is the difference in temperature between the object and the environment. If the temperature difference is very large, then the object is going to heat up or cool down much faster than if the difference in temperature is very small. Okay. D sub zero is going to be your initial difference in temperature between the object and the environment. And R is going to be some constant, which you know depends on the temperature of the oven and the and the type of meat we're cooking. Okay? And R is always going to be negative. Okay? It doesn't matter if the object is heating up or cooling down because this is all about the difference in temperatures. And as the object heats up or cools down, in its environment, the difference between temperatures is always going to be shrinking. Okay, That's kind of how this works, so that's why R is going to be a negative number. So in this particular example, our original difference in temperature would be the temperature of the oven, 325, minus the original temperature of the bird, which is 35. So my original difference in temperature is 290. Okay, Then I did a temperature check. I checked the temperature one and a half hours later, so T is going to be 1.5. And when I checked it, the difference was 325 minus 130. The oven was still 325 degrees, but when I checked the temperature of the bird, it was 130. So the new difference in temperature, one and a half hours later, was 195. So I can plug these values into the formula. T is 1 and a half. My original difference is 290. My new difference was 195. You do not plug the temperatures into this formula. You plug in the difference between temperatures. Okay? I'm going to solve this equation for R very similarly to what I did with the Sethonium problem. And then once I found R, we can solve the equation again to find the value of T. Now one thing to keep in mind when we do the last step. If our goal is to have the temperature of 165, that means our goal is for the difference in temperature to be 325 minus 165, which is a difference of 160. So when I solve it the second time, I'm not going to use 165 degrees, because that's the temperature of the bird. I am going to use 160 degrees, because this is all about the difference in temperatures. Okay, so let's solve this equation. We have 195 is equal to 290e to the one and a half times r power. We will solve this equation to find the relative rate, and then once I know what r is, I can use that value of r to answer the question about uh, when the turkey will be ready for us to consume. So this is much like the problem we did about the radioactive element kind of have to solve the equation twice. We have to solve it once for r, and then once we have r, we can solve it again for t. 
So to solve this equation for R, I follow the same steps. I'm going to first divide both sides by 290. So I get, that will give me 195 divided by 290 equals E to the one and a half R power. Then I'm going to convert this to logarithmic form. I start with the exponent. One and a half R is equal to natural logarithm of this number. You can simplify it if you want, but it really doesn't make much difference once we approximate it. So I would just leave it like that. And then we can divide by one and a half. So R is natural logarithm of 195 over 290, all divided by one and a half. So this is my relative rate at which the temperature of the turkey and the temperature of the oven uh, come closer to each other. So now I'm going to use this value of R. I'm going to use my goal. My goal is to have the turkey reach 165 degrees, and we're going to find the time. So let's go back to my original equation. Let me erase these two steps here. So my original difference in temperature was 290. That hasn't changed. Now I know what the rate is. The rate is natural logarithm of 195 over 290 divided by 1 and a half. And I'm going to try to solve for T. The turkey is done when the temperature is 165, which means the difference in temperatures between the turkey and my oven is going to be 160. So 160 is the difference in temperature we are looking for. Again, when we use this formula, you do not use the temperature of the turkey. You use the difference in temperatures between the turkey and the oven. So now if I solve this equation, it will tell me how long total I should cook the turkey. I follow the same steps. I'm going to divide both sides by 290. That will give me 160 divided by 290 equals E raised to this power. Then I'm going to convert the equation to logarithmic form. So I start with the exponent, which is this. That's my exponent. And that's going to be equal to natural logarithm of this number. Okay. So now to solve for t, I'm just going to divide both sides by this number. So it turns out that t is natural logarithm of 160 over 290 divided by all of this, natural logarithm of 195 over 290 over 1 and a half. So this is how long we should cook the turkey. Now, if this is what you tell your friends and family that are over for Thanksgiving, they're probably not going to know what you're talking about. So we would want to put this time in layman's term, and we would do that using our calculator. So let's go ahead and approximate that. Okay, so my numerator is natural logarithm of 160 divided by 290. And I'm going to divide all of that. Let me put another parenthesis to make sure we separate the numerator from the denominator. So notice I put one set of parentheses around the entire numerator. And then my denominator is going to be natural logarithm of 195 divided by 290 divided by 1 and a half. So that would be my denominator. And if we compute that, it looks like we get approximately 2.25 hours. Okay, so that is the total cooking time for our turkey. 0.25 hours means a quarter of an hour, which we know is 15 minutes. So that means the cook turkey is ready to eat uh, after it's cooked two hours and 15 minutes, which means eat time is going to be 1.15 p.m. Because if you recall, we put the bird in the oven at 11 a.m. So you'll be able to tell everyone that is gathered for Thanksgiving exactly what time the turkey will be finished. You do not need to check the turkey's temperature multiple times. You check it once. So I want you to uh, memorize this phrase for Thanksgiving. 
Um, first of all, if you're cooking the turkey, then you basically know what to do. But if someone else is in charge of cooking the turkey, I want you to memorize this phrase, check the temperature once and give me the data because that's what you want whoever is cooking your turkey to do. You do not want them poking the turkey multiple times to check the temperature. You ask them nicely to check the temperature once, give you the data, and then you can use Newton's Law of Cooling to tell everyone exactly when uh, the bird will be finished. So I hope you try that this year. I hope it works. And uh, that is the end of this video.